Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the failed Kodak Instant Camera. Now I've looked at Polaroids in the past and about how when they started out they were making peel apart pack film. And from 1963 to 1969, the components of that pack film were being manufactured for Polaroid by Kodak. Now, of course, being the photographic innovator that they are, Kodak decided that maybe there was some untapped potential in this instant camera market, especially because the instant camera market was just Polaroid. So Kodak began research and development on their own instant peel apart pack film. Very, very similar to Polaroid's pack film. But this immediately changed in 1972 when Polaroid introduced an entirely different type of instant film with the release of the SX-70 and their classic white framed integral instant film. So this new integral film kind of replaced pack film. Pack film, of course, was still being made and everything, but integral film was kind of the future now of what instant film was going to be. So this sent Kodak back to the drawing board and they decided that instead of releasing a ripoff of pack film, they instead would release a ripoff of integral film. So four years after Polaroid launched the SX-70 and their integral film, Kodak released this. Well, this is actually the second model that Kodak released, but the Kodak Instant Camera and Instant Film were released in 1976, with the first model being the EK4. So Kodak released these cameras and their own Instant Film products after several years of R&D in order to directly compete with Polaroid in the instant photo market. Now, of course, there are a few immediate similarities between the Kodak system and the Polaroid system. Kodak's film was wider than Polaroid's was at the time, making it very close to the size of the later Polaroid Spectra film from the 1980s. This is a Kodak cartridge and this is a Polaroid cartridge. They both have a spring platform design that pushes the film up to be exposed and ejected. Polaroid packs contain a battery in the bottom of them that powers the camera whenever they're inserted. These Kodak packs though would only have held the film. They didn't have a battery. So this is a Polaroid SX-70 and this is a Kodak EK-6. The Polaroid takes the film facing up towards the lens and then gets ejected. Polaroid's film would get exposed from the front, but Kodak's film would get exposed through the back of the image and it can face the lens directly without a mirror. When it's ejected and looked at from the front, it's reversed and properly oriented. The first instant Kodak model was the EK-4, which actually had a mechanical crank on the side to eject the photo through the rollers. Now the model that I have is the second model, an EK6, which is very similar but actually has an electronic motor in it that would eject the photos. And these take two 4LR61 batteries that go inside the film compartment here. There is also an exposure compensation on the front here like on Polaroid cameras and a manual focus slider on the other side. Now many of these Kodak models didn't have a built-in flash, which is actually very similar to the SX-70s. Both cameras took disposable flashes that would attach on the top. Now these SX-70 cameras took these really nice looking little flash bars that when put on top actually didn't look too bad and kind of complemented the rest of the design. The Kodak instant cameras though had a few different options of what you could stick in the flash port on the top here, including what's called a flip flash, which you shoot four at a time and then flip around and shoot the other four. And when you put it on top of one of these awkward looking cameras, it looks like this. Yep, there were a variety of these cameras that Kodak released from 1976 all the way up to 1985. Ones like this Kodak EK160EF actually had a built-in flash so that you no longer had to uh, use this. There were also some folding models like the EK8 and the Kodomatic 930, and of course the EK2, or the handle as it was usually called. This camera was big and bulky, but it had a built-in handle. There were some variations on these models as well, including what is now maybe one of my favorite looking cameras, the Coca-Cola promotional Kodak Instant Camera, which was called Kodak Hap Kodak Happy Times Coca the Kodak Happy Times Coca-Cola Camera. 
Kodak Happy Times Coca-Cola cameras. So the first film that Kodak released for their instant cameras had an ISO of 150, which again is very close to the kind of film that you would get for a Polaroid SX70 at the time. But Kodak later did introduce an instant film with an ISO of 300. And of course, Polaroid later introduced an instant film with an ISO of 600. Man, the instant photo industry in the 1980s was cutthroat. Now the problem with all of this was that the moment Kodak introduced their instant camera products in 1976, Polaroid hit them with a sizable patent infringement lawsuit. And I really can't blame Polaroid for that because, well, Kodak's film was very, very, very similar to what Polaroid was making. Now this patent infringement lawsuit dragged on for about a decade, during which time Kodak was able to market and produce all those different cameras that I just talked about. But in 1986, Polaroid won that patent infringement lawsuit. So Kodak had to shut it all down and stop making the cameras and all their instant film. People had the option of mailing their cameras back to Kodak at the time if they wanted some level of compensation because, well, all these cameras that they had bought within the past 10 years were now completely obsolete forever. And in the end, Kodak had to pay up to Polaroid in the tune of about a nine and a half million dollar settlement over the patent infringement lawsuit. Oh, and also if you were wondering, can you shoot that? The answer is no. All the film that was being made abruptly stopped being made and everything that was out there has now long since expired, most of which pre-1990. So really, there's not much use for these Kodak instant cameras anymore. You might be able to rig up something with Spectra film or even Instax film in them, but you can never shoot them the way that Kodak had intended for you to. Now there is a bit of an interesting side story that happened along with all this Kodak versus Polaroid stuff. See, around this same time, Fujifilm in Japan decided that they kind of wanted in on this instant camera game as well. So they started making their own instant film that would be compatible with Kodak's cameras. They even went on to create their own Photorama cameras, Photorama cameras, Photorama cameras, Photorama cameras, that they released in the 1980s, mostly in Japan. And when Polaroid sued Kodak out of the instant camera game in 1986, Fujifilm kind of cut a bit of a deal with Polaroid so that they could keep making their cameras and film and keep doing their thing over in Japan. As a result, this allowed Fuji to keep making all their instant film products over the years and ultimately ended up with them making the Instax cameras that are so incredibly popular today. But maybe more on that another time. So Kodak really didn't think this whole thing through very well at all. There's no way that they thought they could release their own Polaroid-like film and not get sued by Polaroid. Today these cameras are a dime a dozen, or I mean at least they should be. They live in thrift stores, in attics, and garage sales for super, super cheap. And you should never, ever get swindled into paying a lot of money for a Kodak instant camera because they're useless. And I can guarantee you that you will definitely regret your purchase. Thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out and just subscribing and liking the videos and commenting and just everything that you guys do to support this stuff. I really hope that you enjoyed this and learned a little bit about what these bulky looking cameras are and why you should probably avoid them. And subscribe as I continue to post stuff like this every week and talk about obscure things like this less obscure things like Polaroids and just all sorts of different histories, formats, and all the stuff in between. So anyways, uh, thanks so much and uh, I'll see you guys soon.